One of the most vibrant debates I think that happens here on LinkedIn is around the idea of whether or not you should be personalizing cold email outreach, right? You've got people uh, in the personalization camp that think uh, every single prospect should get personalization. Um, and then you've got you know people in the other camp that think that personalization is a waste of time uh, and the only thing that matters is, is you know talking to pains that people have and, and how to solve them. Um, we think that personalization has its place uh, and particularly when you're prospecting to tier one target accounts, right? Into personas that are prospected to a lot. So where you really need to break through the noise uh, in order to get someone's attention. Um, the way that we think about personalization is uh, kind of in this, this idea of a quadrant. So if you think of a quadrant, you've got four squares. Uh, on one axis, you've got um, relevance. Uh, and then on the other axis, you've got uniqueness, right? And so uh, what we mean by that is that the more unique the personalization is to the person, the better it is. And the more relevant the piece of personalization that you use is to your solution or the problem that you solve, the better it is, right? So to give you a couple of examples of that, you know, something that could be uh, high in uniqueness, but low in relevance, might be the fact that uh, someone is an absolutely diehard uh, fan of a particular sports team, right? And they're very public about this, right? Or they have some very unique interest that they're very public about. Uh, maybe they're like really into triathlon uh, or maybe they're really into endurance running and they're posting about that a lot. Um, so mentioning that in your personalization would be using a high degree of uniqueness. And the, way, the reason that we term it uniqueness is because it's kind of unique to that person specifically. Um, so when we talk about relevance, right, that is high uh, in relevance to the problem that you solve, that would be somehow tying the personalization in to the problem that you solve. So what that could be is if someone specifically mentions in a piece of content that they produce or they, uh, they, they talk about a problem that they have, right? So you could say, hey, uh, Jim, you know, listen to your recent podcast episode and noticed at, you know, three minutes and 42 seconds, you talked about X, Y, Z problem and how you're struggling with that, right? So that is personalization, but it's highly relevant potentially to a problem that you solve if you solve that problem, Okay. Our view is that the best personalization combines high relevance and high personalization. Oh, sorry, high uniqueness. So how can you tie, for example, someone's uh, love of uh, endurance running with the problem that they mentioned on the podcast at three minutes and 42 seconds? If you can combine those two things, then you get really, really good personalization that will get super high cut through. If you can't combine the two, then you're probably better off relying on the high relevance. If there's no high relevance, then you want to go high on uniqueness. Uh, what you really want to avoid is, you know, low relevance and low uniqueness, right? Um, and examples of that could be like, oh, I, uh, I noticed you went to this college. The reason it isn't unique is that thousands of people go to that college every year, and so it has limited cut through. Um, low, you, uh, low relevance would be something like, um, you know, Notice you're hiring SDRs. Um, again, that's something that lots of people are doing and they probably receive lots of messages that have that as the personalization attempt. And so again, it's gonna get limited cut through. Right, so think about how you can maximize for uniqueness and relevance when you're using personalization. That's gonna help you get the best cut through.